Hello, Algebra 2 students. This is a lecture on section 10.4, probabilities of overlapping and disjoint events. Let's start with some vocab. Uh, first up, we have compound events. 10.4 in general is on compound events, and this would be multiple events with the potential to happen at once. In the next lesson, 10.5, we're going to be looking at something very similar, and it's important that you guys understand the distinction between these two topics. 10.4 is one event. Um, one draw of a card, and you're looking at different characteristics of that one draw. 10.5 is going to be you're drawing two consecutive cards, for example. Uh, within compound events, we have two vocab terms. Uh, we have overlapping events, and we have mutually exclusive, aka disjoint events. The book is going to use both of these terms. Uh, overlapping events are going to be if they have one or more outcomes in common. And disjoint events are going to be uh, uh, an event that has no outcomes in common. So how I encourage you guys to visualize this, and you guys should have a good background in this, is a Venn diagram. So uh, we have event A and event B. And so if in our one event, so let's say, let's say uh, event A is drawing a ninth grader, or like randomly selecting a ninth grader. Uh, and event B is that person is in Mr. Nyquist's class, okay? He's a student of Mr. Nyquist. Uh, if we randomly selected a student that was a ninth grader, all of the ninth graders would be in circle A, right? And then all of the non-ninth graders would be outside of circle A. And then event, event B would be students of Mr. Nyquist. Uh, all of the students of Mr. Nyquist would be in event B, and the ones that are not uh, in event B are outside of that. Well, this here is where they overlap. And if there are some ninth graders uh, who are in Mr. Nyquist's class, they would be in this small circle, correct? That's how Venn diagrams work. And so if these were my two events, because some of Mr. Nyquist's students are ninth graders, uh, you would use the term overlapping to describe this situation. Uh, there are other things that you could do that would be to disjoint events. Let's say we looked out in the, in the student parking lot here, and we said event A is randomly selecting somebody who drives a, uh, a Ford, let's say. And event B is randomly drawing somebody who drives a Chevy. I'm just making something up, right? Well, there's no such thing as a Ford Chevy. Right? That doesn't make any sense. Those would be disjoint events because uh, it's impossible to draw one randomly selected vehicle and have it be a Ford and Chevy combination. So uh, there's our definitions between overlapping and disjoint. Uh, the start of your guys' quiz is literally, are these events disjoint or overlapping? Now I encourage you guys to think of it as a Venn diagram. Would there be anything in that intersection area? If there is, it would be overlapping, and if there's not, they would be disjoint or mutually exclusive. You guys are going to need to be calculating some probabilities of these events. Uh, the first formula, and this is going to be a very important formula in Chapter 10, uh, is used for any two events. Okay, It doesn't matter if they are overlapping or disjoint. Okay, Either one, it's going to work. The second formula uh, requires them to be disjoint. If you want to use that formula, they must be disjoint events. Otherwise, that formula will not work. And so what is this formula doing? Well, uh, let's take a look. If you want to find the probability of randomly selecting uh, event A or B, so let's go back to the ninth grade slash uh, Mr. Nyquist student example. Uh, event A was randomly selecting a ninth grader. Well, all of Mr. Nyquist's ninth graders, right, would be in this Venn diagram. And then, sorry, all of Mr. Nyquist's ninth graders would be in, the, in this area right here. All of the regular ninth graders would be out here that are not in Mr. Nyquist's class. And then all of the uh, Mr. Nyquist students who are not ninth graders would be in this circle, right? That's how Venn diagrams work. So if you wanted to figure out what is the probability of selecting a ninth grader or somebody who is in Mr. Nyquist's class, what you would need to do is you would need to count up all of the ninth graders, and that's going to include these students who are in uh, in the intersection area, in the overlapping area. And then you would add up all of the 
So that would be all the ninth graders. Then you would add up all the Mr. Nyquist students, and that would also include these same students. So in effect, we've double counted the ones that were in the center region. And so what we do to fix that is we take away the ones who meet both criteria, right? That's what and means. It means they are uh, Mr. Nyquist student and are in ninth grade. So what we do is we take away all of those students because we've counted them twice. We've counted them in the first circle and in the second circle. So then we take them away once and we have the correct probability. Now this would work if they are overlapping like we just saw here or if they are disjoint because, right, right our disjoint example, our Ford Chevy example, you would just count all the ones who are Fords and then you would count all the ones who are Chevys and then you would take away nothing because there are no overlapping vehicles. So you would take away nothing and we're good. Or you could have just used this disjoint formula which says add up all the Fords and then add up all the Chevys and that's your answer. So that's the reason why we have these two formulas. You guys are going to have to be using them quite a bit in section 10.4. Uh, let's look at an example. So a, a card is randomly drawn from a deck of cards. What is the probability that it is a heart or a 10? Let's go ahead and write the formula down to start. Uh, the formula is probability of A or B, which is what we want to find. We wanted to find or is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. That's that overlapping region. So what is the probability of drawing a heart? Well, hopefully you guys have a good uh, understanding of cards. If you don't, I do have that card facts up on the board in my room. Uh, the probability of selecting a heart. There are 13 hearts in a deck and 52 total cards. The probability of selecting a 10. There are four 10s in a deck and 52 total cards. And then remember, this is the trickiest part. This is the part that students get confused, especially as we move into the next lection, uh, lecture. So be aware of this. Probability of A and B is that overlap of the Venn diagram. How many cards are hearts and tens? And there's only one of those. So we're gonna subtract one out of 52. And then this is pretty simple math. Uh, they all have the same denominator, so I can just add their numerators. 17 minus 1 would be 16 out of 52. I will need to reduce that. Uh, they're both even, so I'll simplify it to 8 out of 26. They're still both even, 4 out of 13. Final answer. Let's do another one. What is the probability that is a red card or an ace? So I'm going to find the probability that I randomly draw a red card. Red cards would be 26 out of 52. Half of them are red and half of them are black. What is the probability that I draw an ace? Well, there are four aces in the deck. And then I have to subtract the ones that are red cards and aces. How many red aces are in the deck? That would be minus two out of 52. And then I'm just going to once again, do this math. 26 plus 4 would be 30. Minus 2 would be 28 out of 52. They're both even. 14 out of 26. They're both even. 7 out of 13. Final answer. Last example. Uh, what is the probability that it is a face card or a 5? So hopefully in your head you're thinking, hey, these are disjoint events. If I were to draw their Venn diagram, we have all the face cards over here. We have all the fives over here. There's four of them. Oops, that's five. We have four of them. And uh, there you go. Uh, there's no overlap to them. So all I have to do is say, how many face cards are there in a deck? There's 12 face cards. How many fives are there in a deck? There are four fives. There's nothing to take away because there is no overlap. And I just end up with 16 out of 52. And I'll mark that wrong if it's not reduced. Eight out of 26 or four out of 13. I'm also gonna throw at you a word problem that's like this. It's not different. It's using the exact same formula. You just have to interpret it. Of the 200 students in high school, 113 are either varsity athletes or on the honor roll. So I'm gonna go ahead and write down my formula. A or B is equal to A plus B minus A and B, right? The P, of course, I, I know I didn't address this in this lecture, but the P means probability of. So of the 200 students in high school, 
113 art varsity athletes or on the honor roll. So we can put that in the or spot here. That would be 113 out of 200. There are 74 high schoolers who are varsity athletes. So 74 of the 200 are varsity athletes. And 51 students are on the honor roll, 51 out of 200. What is the probability of randomly selecting a student who is on the honor roll and? So that's my question. That's my thing I don't know. That's where I'm going to put the X. So now this is just a solve for X type of problem. Uh, I've got 113 out of 200 is equal to whatever these add up to. And 74 plus 51 is going to give me 125 minus X. I'm solving for X. I'm going to subtract 125 to both sides, 125 out of 200. Uh, that's going to give me negative 12 out of 200 is equal to negative X, right? Because that cancels. I subtract it. And 113 minus 125 is negative 12. Now I'm going to divide by negative 1. And what I end up with is 12 out of 200 is equal to X. Of course, that isn't reduced. And Mr. Nyquist wants our answers reduced. So the probability uh, is going to be, I can divide them by 2 and get 6 out of 100. I can divide that by 2, 3 out of 50. You have a 3 out of 50 chance of selecting somebody who is on the A honor roll and a varsity athlete. So that's how we would use that formula for a, uh, for a word problem. We do have one more topic that we need to cover, one new vocab, new formula, and then a couple of examples of this. Uh, the complement of an event. And this would be the probability of something not happening. And for notation, we use just A with a little bar over the top of it. Uh, and this is pretty, pretty simple uh, to do because it's intuitive, it makes sense. If I told you that the probability that you get an A on the next test, if I was like, hey, the probability of you getting an A is uh, 20%, that would mean the probability of you not getting an A would be 80%, right? Because you would just, they have to add to 100. That's the exact same thing of what's going on here. Uh, the probability of something not happening. So if the probability of A is 20%, the probability of I just read this as not a, a not happening would be 80%. I can do the same thing with like, uh, you know, the twins winning the World Series. If the twins uh, have a 3% chance of winning the World Series, let's, uh, let's turn that into a decimal and say 0 0.03. So if probability of A is 0 0.03, I could plug 0 0.03 in here, and you would find out that the probability of not A is 0.97, because you do 1 minus 0.03. Uh, they do get a little bit more complicated, and I have questions like this on your exam. Sometimes it's easier to, to calculate the probability of an event not happening, because the calculating the probability of it happening might be, might be kind of complicated. So we calculate the event that it doesn't happen, and then do 1 minus that. So here's an example. We're going to roll two six-sided dice. Uh, what is the probability of not rolling a sum of six? So there are 36 total options when you roll two dice. Uh, this is a 10.1 question. The first dice has six outcomes. The second dice has six outcomes. We can use the fundamental counting principle to say that there are 36 total outcomes. I actually have them listed in this table. The first question says, what is the probability of not rolling a sum of six? I could count all the ones that are not a sum of six, and then that would be my answer out of 36. Or I could say, well, let's calculate the sum of rolling a six. Uh, here's a six, there's a six, there's a six, there's a six, and there's a six. There's no other uh, sums of sixes on this, on this chart. So the probability of rolling a six, sum of six, would be five out of 36. Therefore, the probability of not rolling a 6 would be 31 out of 36, because I would just do 1 minus this number. I could do the same thing with this question here. Uh, the sum is less than or equal to 9. Well, I could add up all the ones that are less than or equal to 9, or I could say, what are the ones that are 10 or greater? Well, here's one, there's one, there's one. One, two, three more. All of the rest are nine or 
less. So there's a total of six that are greater than 10. So six out of 36, I need to reduce that to one out of six, and that would be my answer. So hopefully you kind of see how that works, uh, where we are, are using the complement of an event happening, which means the, the probability that it does not happen to get to our final answer. Uh, that's all I have for you guys for section 10.4. Please let me know if you guys have any questions, and uh, yeah, thank you.